Speaking of people who can't spell names right, I would say Stephen Jackson probably didn't get his GED. He's just a complete moron. If you don't know who Stephen Jackson is, he's a former NBA player, uh, George Floyd's uh, friend, and he's been very outspoken about, uh, you know, the way police treat minorities in this country. So his friend Deshaun Jackson said some very bad anti-Semitic things about Jews. Now, Deshaun Jackson has since apologized. He's taken steps uh, to educate himself on what the Jewish people had to go through, for example, through the Holocaust. He's donating some money. I, be- I believe he's sincere with his apology. What he did was stupid. But Stephen Jackson is one of those guys that still doesn't think he said anything wrong. He doubled down on Deshaun Jackson's comments, and then he made comments about Jews and uh, owning money and owning all the banks. Doesn't understand that that's a disgusting stereotype, and it's anti-Semitic. He went on with uh, CNN with Don Lemon. Just completely unapologetic. Stephen Jackson is a fool. He is a scumbag. He is uneducated. He is ignorant, and he's the last person I want to hear about talking about race relations in this country because he's just a fool. He can't even put one coherent sentence together. And then we have Nick Cannon, and then Puff Daddy defends him. We have these African Americans that are defending anti-Semitism. That's exactly what they're doing. They're not speaking up. Well, one of those people that is speaking up about it is Charles Barkley. We heard from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar earlier. I love Kareem. Charles Barkley's speaking up, and I'm so happy he's doing that, and I wish more African Americans would, at least those with a platform, so people can hear them. Charles Barkley, one of those guys. Charles Barkley calling out the African Americans out there over anti-Semitism. Have a listen to what Charles had to say. Listen, Deshaun Jackson, Stephen Jackson, Nick Cannon, Ice Cube, man, what the hell are y'all doing? Like, y'all want racial equality we all do. I don't understand how insulting another group helps our cause. And the only person called y'all on it was Kareem. We can't allow black people to be prejudiced also, especially if we're asking for white folks to respect us, give us economic opportunity, and things like that. I'm so disappointed in these men, but I don't understand how you beat hatred with more hatred. That stuff should never come up in your vocabulary, and it should never come up in your heart. I don't always agree with Charles Barkley, but I got to tell you, he is 150% in the right here. If you're an African-American man, and you've been talking about equality, you've been talking about what happened to George Floyd, you want to be treated as equals in society, I'm with you. I'm on your side. So long as you're not violent, so you're, long as you're not rioting, I'm with you. I always have been. But if you are a Nick Cannon or a Steven Jackson or Deshaun Jackson, I'm not going to listen to you. doesn't mean I'm not going to listen to other African Americans because you don't represent them all. But I'm not going to listen to you. I don't want to hear Steven Jackson talk about how minorities are treated. Listen, to, and here's why. Listen to what Stephen Jackson said in response to Charles Barkley's comments. Listen to this. First of all, Charles Barkley, speak on what you know. Don't stop letting people put a batter in your back to say certain you don't even know what you're talking about. I know what I said. So keep my name out your mouth. However you feel, I honestly don't give a f- but That don't stop nothing I got going on. I'm out here with the real people. The people that's really suffering. Caring about my people. You dig what I'm saying? That's what I'm doing. So to, to Charles Barkley, I can give a how you feel. And that's on me. To you. Since you upset with my We don't give a what you upset with. I know I don't. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. The people supporting me. The people standing with me. While y'all just sitting on TV rubbing y'all fat ass bellies. Y'all got me up. Yeah, I'm going to reply. Ain't nobody else going to say nothing. But y'all keep that same energy when y'all see me, too. So now that's a threat, too. That sounds like a threat to me. You're a real tough guy, Stephen Jackson. You're a real tough guy when you played for the Indiana Pacers at the Malice at the Palace, and you decided to go in the stands and, and beat up people in the crowd. You're a real tough guy, Stephen. By the way, when he says, the people support me, what do you mean? You talking about black people? I'll tell you what, there's a lot of black people that I've spoken to. They're not, uh, maybe they don't have the platform that you have, but they're telling me what you said was a disgrace. So no, not all the people support you, including Charles Barkley, by the way. All Charles Barkley said, because Stephen Jackson is so ignorant, 
Really, he has such a low IQ, so uneducated, so dumb, he just happened to be an athlete. All Charles Barkley was trying to say was, if you want to talk about equality and you want to talk about the way you should be treated as equals in this country, the last thing you should do is be making anti-Semitic remarks and going after another group. That's what Stephen Jackson did. Look it up if you don't believe me. He made statements on a podcast talking about how Jews own the world and they own all the banks. He made a stereotype about Jews and money, defending Deshaun Jackson, Puff Daddy, defending Nick Cannon. After Nick Cannon made some horrible comments about white people and Jews, what does Puff Daddy do? Puff Daddy offers him a job. Where are all the NFL players? For those NFL players that have taken a knee, and by the way, I wouldn't call you a son of a bitch because you take a knee. I understand our president did. But for all you people out there, all you NFL players that took a knee that are African-American, and I know you know there are people that are white and other races that did it too, but for all you people that took a knee and you've talked about equality and how your people are oppressed, which I happen to agree with to an extent, where are you when it comes to anti-Semitism? Why has Colin Kaepernick not put out a tweet? Because it would give him credibility if he did. Why wouldn't Colin Kaepernick come out and say, you know what? These comments that Deshaun Jackson made were anti-Semitic and they're wrong. What Stephen Jackson did was wrong. What Nick Cannon did was wrong. But you won't hear that from Colin Kaepernick. Now, why is that? I pose this question to our listeners. I don't care what the color of your skin is. I don't care what your political affiliation is. Because to me, it has no bearing in this conversation. We've talked about politics. We do it every day on this show. But I pose this question to the listeners right now. Why is it that you think that many African Americans out there, many people who are black with a platform, are not calling out anti-Semitism? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar agrees with me. Charles Barkley agrees with me. So I ask you that question. Why is it that somebody like a Puff Daddy will defend anti-Semitism? Why is it that Stephen Jackson defends anti-Semitism? Why? Why are we not seeing more African Americans? Why are we not seeing a lot of African Americans in the Black Lives Matter movement? Why are we not seeing signs against anti-Semitism? I open up the phone lines and I ask you that question because I think it's a legitimate question and it bothers me and it should bother you too. I don't care what the color of your skin is. I don't care whether you're Jewish or not. Anti-Semitism is wrong just as racism is wrong. 702-257-5396. Again, if you want to be a part of this conversation, now's the time to give me a buzz. Why do you think that there are so many African Americans out there with platforms like LeBron James that are not calling out anti-Semitism, that are not calling out people like Nick Cannon, Deshaun Jackson, Stephen Jackson? Why are there a few like Charles Barkley? Why are there only a few out there that are doing it? That number to call again, if you want to be a part of this conversation, give me a buzz. Again, that number is 702-257-5396 if you would like to be a part of the conversation. If you're one of those people that has been marching with Black Lives Matter, the Black Lives Matter protesters, if you're one of those people that has been talking about equality, if you're one of those people that has strong, solid opinions about how African Americans have been oppressed and we're talking about police brutality, where are you now when it comes to anti-Semitism? Where are you? Because the way I think is this, ladies and gentlemen, there's something called credibility. I want to hear you. If you're black in this country, I want to hear you. Your voice deserves to be heard. I want to talk about how you've been treated in your life. It could be law enforcement. Maybe you you didn't get a job because of the color of your skin. Maybe you've been followed in a Walmart and people thought you you were going to shoplift because of the color of your skin. Maybe you've been pulled over a bunch of times for no reason. I want to hear your stories. But the second you attack another religion or group because of their religion... To me, you lose all credibility. Am I wrong in saying that? Am I wrong? 702-257-5396. Again, if you want to join the conversation, 257-5396. Let's go to John. John, you're up next on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, how's it going, Brian? Good. Yeah, you know, I'm just curious as to why this is becoming an issue now. I mean, you know, these people kept saying all lives matter, all lives matter, and then out of nowhere— 
you know, you, they, they, you have an issue like this and their Kaepernick's nowhere to be found, nowhere to be found. So why is it that, you know, this is coming up as a question now? This is a situation from, from before. I agree. And I think Colin Kaepernick loses a lot of credibility. Uh, if you're going to talk about racism and how your people are oppressed, I don't have a problem with that. I have a lot of problems, by the way, with, with Colin Kaepernick for other reasons. But but is it would it be so hard for LeBron James to tweet something out about anti-Semitism? Nothing. He talks about his own people all the time. He talks about, and by the way, uh, there are a lot of people that are not black that support LeBron James and have supported his career. So it shouldn't just be about his people. That's number one. And number two, when he makes a comment uh, you know, every black person that leaves their house, they think they're going to be, uh, I forgot the word he used, uh, but hunted down. I think that was the word he used. You know, he, he's going to make statements like that. But when when his own people, if he wants to use that term, make anti-Semitic comments, where is he? I agree with you. 100%. Where is he? Where is he? This is this is my problem with this. And, you know, I applaud Charles Barkley and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but, you know, Shouldn't everybody be on that side? Hate is hate. And then you've got this buffoon, Stephen Jackson, who, by the way, I will never listen to again when it comes to race in this country. Will you? I won't. Yeah. That's for sure. I'm with you, John. I appreciate the phone call, my friend. Thank you. 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Let's go to Rodney. Rodney is next on the Vegas Take. Rodney, what's going on? Hey, how you doing? Good. Okay. I'm an African male, African-American male. And I'm in my 50s, and uh, I'm totally on the side of uh, Barkley, Kareem, and trust me, there's uh, many other blacks that are on that side. Mm -hmm. Um, The other side to the left, I guess I'll say the left, are Black Lives Matter. It's extremely hypocritical in their views and actions. I mean extreme, can't get more extreme. And trust me, I am black. Although I sound white, everyone tells me that shit. So can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I uh, okay, watch the language. Can I? Can I ask you something, if I may? Yes, go ahead. Uh, in regards to Black Lives Matter. Okay. Uh, I agree with you that there are extremists out there in the Black Lives Matter movement. I'm not going to label them a Democrat or a Republican, but I will agree when you go to a Black Lives Matter protest, you're not going to see many MAGA hats or Trump signs. So I will give you that. But with right. that, with that being said. I believe, and you could tell me if you disagree with me or not, you're an African-American, you, you know, in your 50s, you've been around. So I believe that the majority of those protesting, uh, they may not be organizers of the Black Lives Matter movement, but the majority of those protesting around the country are decent people. They're not setting buildings on fire. Uh, they want equality. I think the majority of those protesting are good people. I truly believe that. Will you agree with that? If that's true, and it probably is, they are definitely not getting the attention um, that they should get. They, well, uh, listen. You know, well, you're right. News, you're right. The I... news kind of gravitates to negative, right. and they're getting uh, overshadowed by the uh, negative, by the by the destruction. Well, I agree with you, Rodney, and I think uh, you, t- you want to talk about the left. I'll talk about Fox News and, and conservative radio. They paint out the entire movement. Uh, as a bunch of Marxist people, and that's just simply not true. Now, are there some organizers of the Black Lives Matter movement that are that are saying some stupid things and are wrong? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But you know, you see someone like yourself, or maybe you know a, a kid in, that's 25, let's just say that's African American, that wants right. to go into a protest and just march and hold up a sign that says Black Lives Matter and is you know in support of of of, of black people that have been mistreated. That's not a Marxist. That's a decent human being. And I believe there are many people like that that are just out there because they want to be treated as equals and they don't have to be black. There could be white people and there are plenty of them that are doing the same thing. I just don't like when people label the entire movement as Marxist. Are there people that are Marxist? Absolutely. But it's not the entire movement. But if you watch Fox News and you watch a lot of the contributors and actual right wing radio, they'll make you believe that everybody involved with this movement are bad. They're terrorists. They're Antifa. No, that's for sure. That's yeah. definitely not the case. I hate that. I, I, I know this. If a Black Lives Matter would pay attention to um, so much black and black crime and, and, and abortions and so many I other agree. things, I agree. I agree. Then they would have more yes. credibility. I agree. But when you only see, when you only care 
about a black life that's taken by a white yeah. police officer, any white person. I agree. And that, to me, that takes a lot of your uh, that is a mistake. credibility out of the argument. I agree. That is a mistake. I think the Black Lives Matter name is very misleading. It should be police brutality against black people or something like that, right. because that's their only cause, really. I agree with you. Uh, mm-hmm. What I also don't like, though, I'll take devil's advocate on this one, is I don't like conservatives and right-wingers out there that all of a sudden they care about black-on-black crime. All of a sudden, they want to talk about Chicago. You know, the last time they did that, they attacked Barack Obama. When it fits their political narrative, then all of a sudden they care about innocent black people being gunned down. I all, I think it goes both ways, Rodney. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's so much so much political yeah. energy driving this whole thing, and it just depends what side no you're looking question. at at the moment. No question, you know? Rodney. Listen, man, I appreciate your phone call. i got to get to some other calls, but really good call. I appreciate you. Thank you. 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Let's go to David. David is next on the Vegas Take. David, what's going on? Yeah, the reason you got these millionaire uh, you know, celebrities talking about it is like they think that black people can't be racist. Because they teach it that there's well, that's there's stupid. A yeah, oppressed class, and they think you know they can say anything they want about Jewish people or anything like that. Yeah. But the main thing with this narrative that you know the Black Lives Matter is uh, a Marxist group. I mean, there's leaders that are Marxist in it, but I think the regular everyday right. Joe person out there isn't exactly with it. But um, one thing that is puzzling to me is why aren't these black celebrities, these millionaires, funding? The Black Lives Matter. I mean, Colin Kaepernick has. He's put the money. Can I answer that? Can I answer that? You don't uh, uh, David, let me, David, hang on, hang on. David, let me answer that. Stay on the line. Let me answer that. I think the reason why they're not funding Black Lives Matter is they don't want to polarize. I think a lot of these celebrities, sadly, selfishly, they care about their bottom line. They care about you know how many followers they have, how much money they're making, whether it's a rap album or you know whether it's a movie that they got coming out. And they're afraid, and I'm sure their managers and their agents are telling them, please don't talk politics or don't do this, this, and this. And the reason why, because uh, it could be polarizing. I applaud Charles Barkley. I applaud Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And I think for LeBron James to not tweet anything out about anti-Semitism, it's cowardly and it's wrong, especially the people that are very financially well-off. For them not to simply tweet out that what Deshaun Jackson said was wrong or Steven Jackson or Nick Cannon, it's disgusting, it's cowardly, and I'll take it even a step further. What Puff Daddy did in defending Nick Cannon and offering him a job is, to me, beyond disgusting. And, uh, well, you Nick know, Cannon's yeah. had multiple jobs. He's gotten fired for these subversive BS comedy makes. You're right. You're absolutely right. I, I, yeah, America's yeah. most talent, and yeah. then there's other jobs. Yeah, and by He's the way, failure. speaking of talent, what does Nick Cannon do? What does he do? That's t- he's a broke down rapper that builds cars yeah. in his free time and abuses and beats women. Yeah, yeah. yeah. David, you are not gonna you are not gonna hear me defend uh, Nick Cannon. I'm with you, my friend. 702-257-5396. I believe Pete is next. Pete, what's going on, man? Thank you, Pete, for the phone call. That might that might, you know what that might have been uh, that that could have been Stephen Jackson disguised as Pete. I don't know if that's true or not. Two five seven five three nine six. Allegedly, allegedly, I don't want Stephen Jackson to threaten me on his Instagram. You know, I, I'd hate that to happen. By the way, I can't even understand a sentence Stephen Jackson says. He's so uneducated and he's so stupid. An f bomb out of his mouth every other word. I just want someone to kick his ass. I am not a violent person. Stephen Jackson is a piece of garbage. Two five seven five three nine six. The number to call. Let's go to Joe. Joe is next on the Vegas Take. Joe, what's going on? Hey Brian, uh, I have a question. Uh, this guy Nick Cannon uh, wasn't he married to uh, Mariah, Mariah Carey? Carey? Yes, yes, sir, he was. Is Mariah Carey uh, considered Caucasian? I don't think so. No, she's not. Oh, she's not. No, she's not. Oh, I, I thought she was Caucasian. No, she's not. Oh, okay. Because no, uh, no. you know, uh, if she was, they have a child together, right? I believe they do. Yes, they do. Okay, so yeah. uh, I don't see too much melatonin in uh, Mariah Carey, but do you? Well, I, I don't. I I don't really care what the color of Mariah no, Carey is. No, 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 no. I'm only going by according. To, I'm only uh, not me. It's what Nick Cannon said. Yeah. And you know, and you know, he gives me and probably millions of people the impression. I mean, because he has a kid, and again, he's saying it, not me. Right. He's kind of calling his own child a half of a savage, and it's sad. It is, no, you know what? You, no, you, listen. I get your point now. I was, you know? I didn't I didn't know where you were going with that. Now I do. You're absolutely right. He yeah, called the guy's Joe. A hypocrite. Well, you know, Joe, you're, you're right. Gonna, yeah, let me just get background. Call somebody. Yeah. You're going to say somebody has that has no melatonin in their, in their skin. Yeah. Mariah Carey 
To me, I thought she was a tie-in, to be, to be honest. Joe, let me give people a little bit of background on what you're talking about uh, in regards to Nick Cannon. He called white people savages and animals, if, if I'm not mistaken. And, exactly. what you're, and what you're saying, and it's a valid point, is that you know if his son is half white, then you're calling your son half savage. I mean, I guess technically you're, what you're saying is, is true. I mean, and it's pathetic. You can't, get, you can't get no more dumber than that. Have a good one, Brian. Thank you, Take thank care. you. Oh, you're absolutely right. You can't get dumber than that. Anybody who is racist, anybody, I don't care whether you're anti-white, anti-black, and yes, black people can be racist too. Everybody could be racist. I don't care. And, you know, we had this discussion yesterday on the show. The idea that just because Donald Trump's daughter is married to a Jew, he can't be anti, an anti-Semite. I'm not saying he is an anti-Semite, but I'm just saying the idea that just because somebody in your family marries somebody that's black doesn't mean that you can't be a racist. Just because someone in your family marries somebody that is Jewish doesn't mean that you don't have hatred towards Jewish people. I see it all the time. And we had somebody that called into the show yesterday, a nice woman who happened to be black, and she said she dated a man who was Asian. And she told me on this show yesterday that her boyfriend's mother— was a racist and hated her because she was black. It can happen anywhere at any time. There are two different types of racists. There are closet racists, and then there are people that are just not afraid to share who they are. It's the people in Charlottesville, the neo-Nazis and the Klan members. And yes, I know a lot of people are defending Donald Trump, but you can't make a statement and say there are good people on both sides when one side of the aisle are a bunch of neo-Nazis and Klan members. That's why people got upset at that. Don't you understand? The first thing that should be out of your mouth is those people that were chanting, you know, blood and soil, Jews will not replace us. The first thing out of the president's mouth should have been those people are despicable. I disavow them. Anybody who is a member of the Klan, anybody who is a neo-Nazi, you people are disgusting and there's no place for you in society. That's all he had to say. Then if you want to talk about Antifa, And some of the violence there, I have no problem with that as well. But to say there are good people on both sides, why don't you conservatives understand it's offensive? There's no such thing as a good person that's chanting out blood and soil. Jews will not replace us. Those aren't good people. And then the excuse I hear is, well, he was talking about the monuments, the people on the monument side on both sides. Well, he wasn't very clear about that, if that's what he was trying to say. And I'm tired of people making excuse for people who say dumb, ignorant, and sometimes racist and anti-Semitic things. If you're one of those people that wants to go after Puff, uh, wants to attack Puff Daddy, which I agree with you, then go after the president, too, and he defends the Confederate flag. Can we be consistent? It shouldn't matter what you look like. That's what this whole conversation is about right now. It shouldn't matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. It shouldn't matter what you look like. It shouldn't matter whether you're black or white or you're Jewish or you're Christian, whether you have an R next to your name or a D next to your name. Hate is hate. Does it happen on both sides? Sure. I'm not painting one side of the aisle to be racist. I'm not painting one race or gender to be a bunch of anti-Semites. It's very simple. Wrong is wrong, and we need to call it out. The Confederate flag, wrong. The president should be able to call that out, and when he defends it or he says he doesn't have a problem with it or an opinion one way or the other, it's wrong. When people are chanting in Charlottesville, Jews will not replace us, blood and soil, it's wrong. When Stephen Jackson makes anti-Semitic comments, it's wrong. When Deshaun Jackson and Nick Cannon make anti-Semitic comments, it's wrong. Nobody should come to their defense. If they truly are sorry for what they did, they apologize, and Deshaun Jackson is taking action, then we should be able to forgive him. Because in my personal opinion, actions speak louder than words. Wrong is wrong in this country, and it shouldn't matter what political affiliation you come from. It shouldn't matter whether you're black or white. The Klan is wrong. If you want to talk about, well, Brian, what about Antifa? Anybody in that group that commits any violent act, it's wrong. I don't care whether you chant out white power or you show a white power sign like Roger Stone. It's wrong. I don't care if you're a juror walking out of the O.J. Simpson trial years ago holding up a black power sign. It's wrong. All these people are wrong. If you can't admit that, then you're part of the problem.